Hello, anybody who's joined already. I'm not starting just yet. We'll be starting in about 10 minutes, just under 10 minutes. I'm just doing a couple of tests to make sure things are still working.
Well, and with that uh, instruction from my daughter to our cat, uh, I think it's probably best that we start. Oh, look, lots of comments, which is lovely. I mean, we're not we're not quite at the at the millions that uh, that some um, that some people are managing to get with their uh, keep fit videos. I think we could uh, do some star jumps to warm ourselves up. But uh, it's great to have you all on board. And uh, lovely to see some ex um, uh, chantry singers, or some uh, former chantry singers, I should say, or some interim ch uh, chantry singers, or who knows, maybe one or two future chantry singers. Um, so, what you have to bear in mind with this broadcast is that I've never done one of these things before, and so the technology of it slightly um, frightened me. Hello, Vivace singers. Yes, I, I must stop being distracted by the live chat. Um, and so uh, um, we had a couple of tests, some of which so some of which went very well, and an awful lot of it went very, very wrong indeed. So if we survive from the beginning of this to the end of this without a major breakdown of some sort, then um, then we're all doing well. And uh, if the cat runs across here um, and the house catches on fire, then we'll, um, we'll survive that as well. The idea behind this performance or this, this um, broadcast is to be, to be the first section in, um, in a series of uh, broadcasts, which is going to become the um, Chantry Singers Vocal Boot Camp. Um, this was a term that came out. It, it, was, it seemed quite appropriate. We're going to spend the time, instead of frantically learning a whole load of notes. We're going to spend the time in lockdown learning a little bit more about singing, about posture, about vocal technique, about jaw position, about vowel color and harmony, um, and uh, about the physicality of it, breathing, and also a little bit more in terms of sight reading, sight reading and um, some uh, some introduction to music theory, which some of you will know and um, and will understand fully, uh, but some people might have joined who are always a little bit confused by what's going on with all the dots here when I'm um, uh, when I'm writing a piece is to sorry I had an unstable thing going on there which I'm not quite sure about. I uh, hope you can all hear me again. Do please say if you can't um, in the in the comments down here. Um, to uh, yes, I was listening to no, I was um, looking at some of my arrangements and some of my compositions, and I really do like mixing up triplet rhythms of various kinds. So cross triplet rhythms. Anybody who sang Spiritus Day will know what I'm talking about, and. Um, it suddenly occurred to me, well, it didn't suddenly occur to me, it occurred to me while we were working on that, that people find that sort of thing very, very difficult. And so part of what we're going to be dealing with, not today necessarily, but in the, in the, in the weeks to come, is that. And so we're going to um, get started now with some vocal warm-ups. And for this, I would like to, I, you know, part of the problem that I had with planning this day and this and, and this <clears throat> broadcast was that I was going to be doing um, an online singing lesson with absolutely no idea as to uh, whether anybody was doing it. I thought you might all be sitting at home on the sofa with a cup of tea laughing. So please don't do that. But um, in order to keep me slightly this side of sanity, I've decided to enlist the help of two, um, well, I suppose assistants. Um, two glamorous assistants, if you like. Uh, I do hello. So what we do appreciate that we are broadcasting live footage from our house. Of we might just about get away with that, given that it's a closed circuit. Okay, so we're going to start with this chord here. I hope you can hear that. As you can hear, the piano tuner was due to arrive on the day that lockdown started. It hadn't been tuned for quite some time, so some notes particularly uh, are sounding a little mm, vinegary. But uh, 
Unfortunately, he couldn't come because the lockdown was declared. And I tried to convince him that he was a key worker. But he wasn't having any of that, so he didn't turn up. OK, so we're going to start. Please, everybody, get up <laughs> on your feet. And we're just going to have a little bit of a bounce up and down and shake your hands out so that we can feel that they're nice and supple. Because there's the only thing worse than having a rehearsal after a full day's work where you're really tense is uh, having a choir rehearsal when you've had about a month of doing nothing. So try to get our bodies moving and shake out the hands, OK? And I'd like you also to make sure you're all stood up. Make sure you're all stood up, OK? And then just bend your knees down as if you're doing one of those, what's it called? Maybe? Squat. A squ well, or a plie, isn't it? A plie. A plie. I was thinking of something slightly more elegant than a squat. Plie. A squat. OK. A bit like a gorilla. OK. And then you can bend your neck over to the left. And feel these muscles here stretching ever so slightly. And then roll your head round very gently. Don't, please, anybody do any damage to themselves. We're going to roll our head round to the right and feel this bit of the neck gently stretching. And round to the left again. Uh, just feeling that. And round to the right one more time. Okay, and now drop your head down so that your chin is touching your chest. Open your jaw and take in a lovely big yawn. <sighs> Good. And we can release that sound now when we've taken that breath in on any sound you like. So take in the breath again. <sighs> That's lovely. And this time you can take in the same breath, but this time release it on a sound. My favorite. And we'll come to why that's my favorite in just a moment. So let's take in a breath. Keep it going, keep it going, keep it going. So let's try that again. And this time we're going to start with a pitch slightly higher up. So breath in and. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Press, 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 press from your tummy until there's nothing left. And take a relaxed breath in. Good. So it's a quite important when you're doing this that you don't allow your throat to constrict as you're going through to the end of your breath. A lot of people end up doing that. So as they're coming towards the end of their note, they go, oh, please don't do that. Your, br yes, thank you, Lily. your breath out is simply happening because of muscles down here. And when we say we've run out of breath, we really haven't, you know. There's still breath in your lungs. There's still plenty of um, plenty of gas in the lungs, but they won't move any further upwards because these muscles have become exhausted. Consequently, expand these muscles, get them a little bit stronger, and you will be able to sing further towards the end of where you consider to be the end of your breath. Okay, so we're going to try that again. And this time, what I'd like you to do is after the long held V sound that we're going to descend on, I would like you to just do four gentle stabs. So it will be a long and then was that a burp, Lily, that you broadcast in the nation? I do believe it was. Right. So, here we go, a gentle breath in and then. Ready with those stabs and. Yeah, yeah, thank you. At which, at which point you should have used up all the breath. So try to make sure that you've used it all up by the time I get to those four little stabs. Let's try that again. And. Ready for those four stabs? Here we go. And 
good. Uh, so we should feel that you've done a little bit of a workout. If you don't feel that these muscles are starting to feel a little, a little bit used, then you're not doing it properly. And here's the thing. When we're breathing out, we are using these muscles down here. In the past, we have talked about this as the diaphragm. And while there is a certain amount of movement of the diaphragm, it's no way near as much as we used to think. The diaphragm really doesn't have much of a job to do when breathing out. It's the tummy muscles, the lower core muscles and abdominal muscles right down here, plus your back that are doing the support that enables the diaphragm to move up. They're being pushed, they're squeezing in on the sides and they're pushing up today's lunch and possibly today's breakfast, <laughs> which is all located down here behind those muscles. And that is pushing up on the inside of the diaphragm, which is then allowing it to build up the air pressure required for singing. So we have to make sure that when we've taken the breath in, when we've taken the breath in, that um, that these muscles are as relaxed as they can possibly be. If we are tensing them on the breath out, then we need to relax these muscles on the breath in. And consequently, we have to do something which a lot of people find a little bit difficult. You spent all your life trying to build these muscles into some kind of shape so that you don't have your tummy hanging about all over the place, whereas suddenly, when you're going to take a breath in as a singer, that's exactly what you need to do. We need to take a breath in where this spills forward over your over your um, waistband. And so the breath in needs to come from down here and we go like this. And I hope, you've, I hope you appreciate the amount of Easter eggs I ate in order to make this as, as, uh, as apparent to you now as possible. Before Easter, you wouldn't have been able to see anything, but... But uh, luckily, yeah, right. luckily, we had quite a quite a good delivery in the garden, and i um, and I ate them all. So here we go. We're going to take a breath in. Put a hand down here, and I want you to feel the gap from that hand to this hand. You can adopt a sailor's posture. The gap between those two hands should get bigger as you breathe in. So we're going to gently breathe in, and then squeeze from here on a quick breath out to an F. So it's going to be like this. Off we go. And. And let's do three of those. So can you try and push out all your air in as quick a time as possible? So a breath in goes. So I'm just going to take my little glamorous assistants to task here because I don't think they're pushing out quite hard enough. You're gently relaxing the breath and going rather than So if we can try and make sure that we do it to like a quick stab from our tummy. Ready? And breath. This is a really good way of your getting used to what the breathing should feel like when you start these exercises. Good, okay, relax and shake your hands out one more time. And can we do the opposite of what we like to do when we're breathing and when we're singing, and that is tense up everything. So I'd like you to tense your shoulders and your neck and stick your head forward so that we can feel the muscles that we're using there and now relax it all. So the shoulders go down, the neck goes up, and my eyes have gone beyond the scope of this camera. So I'm just going to drop myself down so that you can see that. There we are. I've gone into quite a sort of a feeling like I've just been to the, to the uh, chiropractor and I'm about an inch and a half taller than I was before. So tense it up again. And now relax. And you should feel the, 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 the tensing that you've just been doing, those muscles, gently losing their tension and dropping down. Try to make sure that your shoulders are always in that low position when you're singing. So a breath in is all from down here and none of it from up there. Simply the tummy moving out. Now, there are one or two people who find that exercise really, really difficult. 
and they will spend all their time going, but nothing seems to be happening. And for those people, what I would suggest you do is this. When you go to bed tonight, lie on your back and put a box or book or two by your tummy around where, between where your navel is and where your belt buckle would be or the waistband. Just drop it there. And it's quite important that when you've done that, think about anything but breathing. You can think about the day you've just had, the, uh, the, the choir rehearsal in the dim distant future when we all come back together again. You can think about anything. And after a while, your breathing will have returned back to a steady state of breathing that, let's face it, you're doing right now without thinking about it. And you will notice that that box that you've put on your tummy, oh, whoops, your, that box of, that you've put on your tummy will be slowly rising and falling, and it won't be going the way you're expecting it to go, or, ne or necessarily. Because we have this expression in English, don't we? When we need to fit more than one person onto the train or one more person onto the train or the bus, we say, breathe in, everybody. And that's complete rubbish, because if everybody breathed in, they'd be able to fit less people in, fewer people, sorry, not more. So what they should say is breathe out everybody and then you just get looked at as if you've gone mad. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> now we can start applying it to some pitch. So we're going to do my favorite chord, a B flat major chord. Okay, and I'd like you to take that breath in from here. So let's stand up if you happen to have sit, sat down. Put a hand back here, take the breath in low and gradual and then we're going to start with and one, two. Uh, Fantastic. I do hope you were all doing that at home. Um, uh, um, yes, these two were doing it very, very beautifully. Try to make sure that there's plenty of v into that mix. V Sometimes when people try and sing this v sound, they end up making a sound instead. Really channel all the breath out of that part, uh, about, out of, through your teeth. Okay, so we're going to do it one more. Up a semitone and a breath in. Lovely. My two glamorous assistants here are, if I, if I have to be brutally honest, not making enough sound. Okay, then we're making a very nice focused, a sort of world, wordless chorus sound, which many of us know about when we've had to sing pieces by John Rutter. Okay, or Vaughan Williams. But what I want to hear is. In other words, none of the sound is coming out of your nose. All of it is coming out of your mouth and your teeth. Here we go. One, two. I'm going to get in so much trouble later on, aren't I? Okay, but they did. They did that marvelously, and I hope you did at home too, so that you can feel the breath flow against your teeth. Here's the next one. One, two. Lovely. And we are making sure that we're sliding absolutely everything. No hit hit no hitting of individual pitches. And you want to feel that this apparatus here has we haven't talked about this yet at all. Okay? This is um of almost no importance to us. We want to keep that and feel that this is as relaxed as it can possibly be. Okay, here's the next one, and go. Lovely, make sure your hands are still on there, <coughs> and that that's still supporting the sound, or acting as the, as the, acting as the factory behind which the sound is produced. Thing. <coughs> which is to take it from a 
to an E sound. <clears throat> now, when, when we go from a V to an E, I want you to make sure, please, that you're not doing anything to interrupt the breath flow. <clears throat> Try that, please, just on that note. Mm, I forgot where we are. Um, yes, so we're on an A. And one, two. Lovely. Okay, and so now we can sing. Ready? Lovely. And if you can just give a moment's consideration to the position of your own jaw on V, you will obviously need to have your teeth quite close together. But when we go to E, I want you to relax your jaw and drop it down as much as it'll go while still singing E. Ready? One, two. Okay, so you see the position of my tongue and jaw there for that E vowel sound. The tongue is touching into the bottom of my front teeth. There. And then it's rising up at the back, producing a very narrow channel just about here. And if you were to have a pencil that is certified coronavirus free, wipe it down with a couple of Dettol wipes beforehand and insert that pencil just there so that you're holding it with your tongue and your roof of your mouth only and it's not touching any of your teeth. That gives you the perfect position for your tongue in order to be able to produce that vowel. Try that at home. Okay, we go up to the next one. And one, two. To the next one, which is going from E to air. So I like the beginning of the word Vienna. One, there's the chord. One, two. So we've got to start looking at vowel color because <coughs> in English, vowels are often um, something that we manufacture in a very lazy way. Not like many other European languages where the vowels are absolutely crucial, but our vowels tend to shift about and flop about all over the place. You just hear... Um, let's take, for example, a German trying to say the word of what the greatest romantic composer. He would say, or she would say, uh, Ludwig van Beethoven. And those vowels are all pure. Beethoven. An English person would look at the same word and try to pronounce it in a German accent and say Beethoven, because we take the vowel E, we change it to A, without even thinking about it. It's just second nature to us English. So we have to try to make sure that when we're singing, we sing on pure vowels. And that is what we're doing here. We're taking from e -e -e And I would like you to make that e vowel sound quite, quite um, acerbic, quite, quite narrow quite high pitched can we all try that one two so don't 
try and darken the vowel sound down. Don't try and make no, none of that. Almost like you've not changed the E vowel sound at all. Let's go up a second. <coughs> One and two. Hang on, my assistants weren't concentrating. And one, two. Good, okay, and a semitone higher. We might get to the point where some altos are struggling slightly. We're getting up to a sort of D flat. Okay, but just give it a try. Here we go. Next one. Three, four. Great. Okay. Thank you. So there's our D flat and sopranos and tenors amongst you. Altos and basses, you can go off and make a cup of tea now. Huh? Sopra <laughs> sopranos and uh, and sopranos and tenors, you better stick around because we need to do a few more. <coughs> One, two. tenors and sopranos, your E sound wants to have a lower and more open and relaxed jaw. So I'm doing all of that with quite an open, relaxed jaw, aren't I? Here we go. It's taken me years, and I haven't perfected it by anybody's standards. Ready? One, two. You opted out. You opted out. Well, that's <laughs> fine. That's fine. And, and and let's face it, which of us haven't opted out of a top note at some point in our no. lives? We've never done that, right? Okay. I'm sorry if you're finding these guys distracting. I am slightly. <laughs> Ready? All, last one. And go. <laughs> Oi! <laughs> <laughs> you said you never opted out of one of those. Come on. Come on. You I can can't do, do it. So one, two. That was the world's fastest cup of tea, I do realise that. And we're going to take ourselves down to here, and I'd like you to take it to the other extreme. We've looked at the two brightest vowels, E, E. We're now going to look at the two darkest vowels, U and O. Now, you notice from my shape, the shape of my mouth, those are both quite open in terms of the jaw position. Ooh, oh. It would be really helpful in these situations if you were to have some kind of uh, mirror or if you would be able to look at yourself in the screen, in the reflection of the screen and see yourself. I can see myself at the moment. I look a complete idiot, but there we are. So ooh, my jaw is down. And I've talked in the past about doing Kenneth Williams impressions, haven't I? So try to imagine that. Ooh, matron. Ooh, and so we're going to take it down to here and sing. Down at that part of your voice, it'll be quite woofly, but I want that kind of sound color because we're going to take that up right to the top of the voice. Okay, so one, two. So we're going a little bit faster. Abandoned. Come 
Are you going to come back and join us? Come on, this is you as well. Ready? One and two. Good. Now try and make sure that you're not just singing through a letterbox. You will sound about twice your age if you do that. So try and make a more open sound, dropping the jaw nice and low. And go. Good. I see you can see why I went out with her. She's such a good singer. Really? It had more to do. Please, let's not get involved in that now. This is probably a time. Let's switch the broadcasting machine off before we start discussing that. Ready? One, two. And I keep forgetting where we are. There we are. One, two. Good. Now, if you're an alto or a soprano, you should have felt some kind of click in your voice at that point when you went up to that top note. Did you feel it? I heard it. The sort of transition of the sound from your chest voice into a little bit more of a, 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 a head voice. Well, it's gone through the first passaggio. That's gone beyond the B natural that I keep banging on of my sopranos about singing slightly flat. Always think everything above a B or B flat as being nicely in your head. And ooh, with an open jaw is a great vowel to do that on because it lends itself to break into that upper part of the voice quite early. So, tenors and basses, you won't feel this so much because your voices work differently. Ready? And. Good. Try to make sure that the aperture here is not pea-sized, but the size of a Malteser. And if you don't know what the size of a Malteser is, I suggest you buy some the next time and then eat them all, but leave one behind so that you can just do this rehearsal, this practice with it. Ready? what the sound is like at home but the sound in this room is pretty good I mean, just you know ready and great and altos this is oh, that's up to an e flat that was a lot easier to sing than e and a wasn't it ready last one and go now, sopranos and tenors, we're going up right into the into our head blended voice that we're going to be looking at here. So in order to achieve that, we are going to need to open our jaw and mouth just a little bit more from this point onwards. We've taken it up to an F. In order to make that work, I do need to open this up a little bit more. So there was an excellent um, uh, documentary about Janet Baker on the BBC iPlayer. I don't know if it's still available. It may well be. Um, but uh, basically, if you can look at any YouTube clips of Janet Baker singing coloratura, and you will see her singing a single vowel. And as she goes up and down the scale, she is tuning that vowel to every single pitch using her mouth opening up and closing down, depending on whether she's going up or down. Up is always more open, down is a little closed. Now, it doesn't always work that way, and that's a bit of a generalization, but for our purposes at the moment, it's a generalization that works, okay? Ready, go. Good. Okay, lovely. And my daughter is now taking over from Paula because she is the soprano. Unfortunately, she's not doing anything of what I've just said. She's singing <laughs> through a letterbox, which is making it sound a little squeaky, like the mouse we probably discovered in our garage the other day. <laughs> so I want you to think the shape of um, the word wow, but don't sing it. <laughs> 
You can see that it's opening and closing, but it still sounds like ooh, doesn't it? Ready? And. <laughs> the folks at home won't have been able to see that. Ready? One, two. <laughs> Great. Okay. Lovely. And we're now going to take it on to O. O, as in Loch Ness Monster. Basses and altos. Let's have you back, please. And we're going to take it up the octave and, sorry, up the fifth and then the octave. Okay. So this is to O. And this is O. Nice big space in here. Imagine that you've just eaten a hot potato and you don't want to spit it out. I mean, it's too hot to swallow. So it's got to stay in your mouth. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Yes. <laughs> Lovely. So make sure that you, you've got your mouth and making as big a space as possible, but don't <coughs> let your tongue tense. That wants to stay nice and relaxed. So let it flop forwards against your bottom front teeth, just there. Oh. One, two. Oh. And one, two. Oh. And one, two. Oh. One, two. Oh. And. Oh. to go from the brightest of the vowels, E, to the darkest of the vowels, well, one of the dark vowels, R. Now, certainly the most closed vowel, E, with your tongue bunching up and making a narrow channel through your mouth, to a big cavernous space, R. And we're going to do that on one note. So here, um, we're going to do that on that B. So, E, O, E, O, E. Crucially, as you'll have noticed, I've kept my jaw open on all of those. So it's not e -o -e -o -e, where you can hear the sound shifting about all over the place. We want to keep the sound more or less central. Let's give it a go. Deep breath again. Keep your keep keep and just remember, remember where all of this is coming from. Hand back down there. And go. E -o -e -o -e. And go. And next one. Go. Just make sure that your shoulders and arms are nice and relaxed and everything's been, you know, give everything a good shake out. Give everything a good shake out. Everything is shake out. Everything is shake out. Yeah, there you go. Give yourself a shake out. Yes, lovely. Right. And now we're going to do a couple of uh, sort of mind waking up exercises. So I'm going to start this scale. I hope you do appreciate the nail polish that has been applied. This was my daughter. Um, who decided uh, that uh, she would like to? We yes, thank you. Nails. Yes, we all have nails. My daughter decided that she would like to paint my nails one day, and I thought, yes. well, if we don't do it during lockdown, when are we going to do it? And uh, one of my colleagues, on noticing that, said, "You did realise that never having nail polish was also <laughs> an option," but I didn't think that appropriate. So here we go. We're going to start um, with the scale going up, but we're going to count it from one to. Eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Ready? And I'm going to take a deeper breath this time. Ready? And one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And 
and see inadequacy of my piano skills is now revealed to the nation. Well done. Okay, so as we go up and down, I'd like you to miss out particular notes and miss out particular numbers. So we're going to miss out number three here. So one, two, four, five, six, seven, eight, seven, six, five, four, two, one. You can take a breath in during that three. Here we go. Let's just try that. One, two, three, go. Lovely. And this time we're going to miss out five. Ready? Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. It's an awful lot harder to do on a piano than I thought it would be. Okay, and this time we're going to miss out two and six. Ready? Two, three, four. And six. Let's just get that right, okay? Two and six. Try it one more time. Here we go. And one, two, three, four. Ah, I played the wrong chord. I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen. We'll try that one more time. Number two and six. Here we go. Two, three, four. It's a lot harder than it is. Okay, let's try one more of those. Let's try. But which number should we miss out, Lily? You eight. choose. Eight. <laughs> well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven, six, five, four. Okay, yeah, great. And one. One. Oh, Lily. Okay, <laughs> right. Here we go. One and eight. Uh, you, you, they tell you never work with children and animals. Ready? One, two, three, four. <laughs> Right, okay, lovely. Good. I think I've done about as much as I need my glamorous assistant for, so thank you very much. And you can go off. You're going to go to bed. No! <laughs> and uh, and uh, uh, so I hope you feel just slightly, um, slightly sort of warmed up. I think you feel that you've maybe your, your voice, um, which was possibly slightly underused over the last few weeks, has suddenly found itself back in use. I certainly found that case. Um, St. Paul's Cathedral was doing a hymn recording where people recorded themselves on videos, um, on, on their mobile phones, recording just a tenor part from a hymn. And I found myself deeply depressed at the state of my voice after a week of not singing anything. And um, and I thought to myself, well, I've got to get back in trim and start doing some warming up and start doing some practice just for the hell of it, not towards anything, but just keeping the voice in trim. If you don't do that, it can easily go off the boil and then you can start having issues where things start getting, start catching just a little bit. Now, in terms of um, what we're going to be doing here, Next week will involve not quite so much of a warm-up. We'll be doing slightly less warm-up, but we will always include some vocal technique. Today we've been doing vowel harmony of um, E, E, O, and U, and trying to make sure that your jaw is nice and doing this video project that a number have got more than anybody, more than anything else, was horror at the fact that you think your mouth is nice and open, but actually nothing's happened. You have to actually do it. It's not just an, a matter of thinking that you've done it. You actually have to watch yourself and feel that stretch open. And it's quite easy to do that when you're not singing. It's another matter altogether to do that. So practice that. That would be uh, brilliant. And now I asked you, I sent out an email um, at about six o'clock, and I hope some of you have had a chance to look at that. Music when soft voices die. I was going through, um, 
I was going through uh, the music that we could possibly do as part of this boot camp. And I thought, uh, as soon as I discovered this piece, beautiful four-part um, song by Parry, how appropriate the, uh, the, the thought of music becoming just a vibration in the memory, which is where we all are at the moment a little bit, isn't it? And we're looking forward to that time when we can just sing together. I remember a little while ago when I, um, when I was involved with a group called the Clarks singing very, very early music, I mean, late medieval and early Renaissance music, walking into a church where some rehearsal was taking place and just hearing two voices really just improvising around an open fifth. This interval here. Always coming back to that interval and thinking to myself, gosh, the people of that day didn't all have the opportunity to sing that you and I take for granted. They wouldn't have heard choirs performing here and there. They would have heard the choir performing once maybe in a blue moon. And for them, it must have seemed like magic just to hear a absolutely tuned perfect fifth. And it's quite a magical thing to sing a perfect tuned perfect fifth standing next to somebody else. Next time you can do it, just get yourselves singing a perfect fifth apart. and. What happens when it's completely in tune is the two of you are locked in a kind of non-physical embrace because one of you, your voices are beating once every channel or, uh, and the other one is vibrating at exactly the um, an, an exact proportion of two to three. That's when you get the perfect fifth. And so it's the closest we can get apart from perhaps the octave, I suppose. So anyway, that was what that was got me starting to think about music as a vibration and music as something that we've with a track. And I'm going to try this experiment now where I play this track to you via my computer. Now, I hope that this works. I've got apparently my connection is now unstable. Please wait while we try to connect to you because I don't really want to play this until. Ah, oh, there it goes. So I hope you can all hear this. And um, I'm going to start playing this track now. This is um, uh, music when soft voices die. And the recording I've included in the, um, in the description of this broadcast, this um, YouTube stream. So you can look at it later. And if you like the sound and if you like the piece, I suggest that you then um, have a go at buying the CD. I've, I've included a link to the record company that produces this. This is the Rodolphus Choir conducted by Ralph Allwood. And I've put a piano alongside it so that you should be able to hear the definition of where the notes start just a little bit more, which would help us with our performance. Here it is.
So that is the piece that we're going to have a, um, have a go at performing. Um, you would not believe the technical difficulties there is involved in trying to get a piece of, um, a, a piece of music to play over the same laptop that's carrying a live stream. It's very, very complicated itself. I've got cables all over the place here, um, cobbled together out of Meccano. So what, what I suggest we do is that I'm going to play that again I would love, I'd dearly love to conduct alongside it, but it's going to be of little use at the moment um, because unfortunately the sound that I get back is the sound of the actual stream. So you'll see me conducting about, about a, I don't know, four beats and a half behind where the music is going to be. But what we're going to do is have a go at singing that together. So if you've got your printout of those three pages and I'll give you the opening chord and then we'll have a play through it again. So. Here is our opening chord. I was nearly going to sit on my cat. That would have been hilarious. So here is basses. And ready. Here we go with the second performance. Great. So I hope that you um, uh, enjoy that uh, this first <laughs> this first performance. Gosh, there's nothing more off-putting than having your having your own voice in your right ear about a second and a half later. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this first performance. So, uh, this first performance, this first live streaming and, and boot camp. So next week we will start working a little bit more in terms of some theory, particularly with regard to um, tonic sol fa. So if you can remember any of this stuff to do with singing do re mi fa sol la ti do do ti la so fa mi re do. Any idiot can do it going up because we've all seen the sound of music. Going down and then shooting about the scale is a little bit more problematic. And it's the first step on to really understanding and being able to sight read um, uh, proficiently and um, confidently. Anyway, in a moment, in about four minutes, we're going to head off to a Zoom meeting. Again, the details of which you should find in the email that was sent to you, and you should find it also in the comments section of this video. And um, I look forward to seeing you there. Grab a glass of something interesting, and uh, because it's going to be like the like the pub. Now, 
Next week, we will include a little bit of question and answer session and then also possibly one or two um, sectional rehearsals so that we can um, so we can put it together uh, and to try and put this to piece together in maybe a couple of weeks' time. Okay? So I look forward to seeing you all on a Zoom meeting in a couple of minutes. Bye!